he's currently certified as a corrosion and materials professional, API 571, by the American Petroleum Institute and a registered engineer by current, that is the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce and bring to present engineer Timothy A. Uluadero. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Oboyemi. Uh, I want to thank everyone for this uh, huge opportunity to uh, share uh, knowledge and as well learn from uh, other colleagues from industry and academics. I, I think I can see uh, a lot of my colleagues, my senior colleagues online here, my head of department, uh, Mr. Liu Adam, who is online, uh, Mr. Osongs and uh, en uh, engineer Pitoye, and a lot of other people that I, time will not permit me to mention their names. I, I want to specially thank uh, the chairman. Uh, I worked with him just within the last uh, few days and I'm highly impressed by the kind of person and the leadership he provides. Um, very, very grateful for this opportunity. So I will just be sharing on the flow assurance. Um, uh, let me share my slide. Am I permitted to share screen now? Yes, please. Please go ahead and share. We can see your screen now. Okay. Thanks. So I will be sharing on an integrated approach to uh, flow assurance, uh, not like gas production. Uh, the first part of the presentation, we actually talked about some basic concepts that uh, uh, are there to in flow assurance. And the last part, I will share some of the current uh, um, efforts we are making to solve some of the other flow assurance problems uh, that develop in the midstreams. So I will just start straight away. Uh, oil production in context, we have flow assurance problem across, as said by the chairman earlier before, across every stage of uh, petroleum production. In the half stream, we have uh, a situation uh, whereby people, we are currently looking for, we are looking for uh, new energies, we are looking for oil and gas production in very, very difficult terrains, in deep sea productions, in environments that are very, very harsh, in seas environment, subsea environments with temperature that ranges with minus one to minus four, which are not uh, the kind of a conventional environment we are used to in prov uh, for providing energy. As much as energy transition is growing and um, investments are going into the energy, we have green energies and all that, uh, fossil fuel still remains, contributes almost 77% of the energy demands that uh, uh, we are, the world is currently demanding for. So there's need for uh, production, oil and gas productions uh, companies to look for oil in places we have not been looking for oil before. So the more those terrain gets rugged, the more those terrain becomes difficult, the more is the challenge to bring what is produced uh, to the platform or to the processing facilities. So flow assurance is one of the techniques that help us to bring some of these resources that we are producing in these difficult terrains to, uh, where, to the end users where it will be needed. So uh, it's, uh, flow assurance helps for safe transport, uh, transportation from high pressure, high temperature fix, difficult terrains and deep seas, and also helps to prevent corrosion in those harsh environments. So uh, also flow assurance in midstream uh, has been uh, undermined before now. Sorry, I think, okay. Yes, I mean, undermined before now. Uh, why a lot of efforts is devoted in getting the crude oil that's been produced or gas that's been produced from the reservoir, or from the wellheads to the platform or receiving host facilities. And most of the uh, flow assurance techniques that have been deployed stopped there. And now what we are experiencing is sludge problem that is sludge deposition in crude oil storage tanks in those facilities in midstreams which reduce the storage capacity, it can lead us to give a lot of other problems in downstreams, like slug flow, we can plug, we can plug your flow streams 
and cause operational problems. And also because of uh, uh, poor storage capacity, it has a major, um, major, or I'm, I'm seeing uh, some people coming in. Maybe I might be host to admit them. No, no, so don't worry. Just, just, just go ahead. We'll handle that. That's okay. uh, right. So uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, problem also that arise from, uh, because of lack of shortage of storage capacity, because of sludge that kick up within the tanks and affect the floating room sometimes and even spilling of oil. We have issue with cost storage transfer measure, which is exchange of the volume that we think we have for money. So uh, a lot of this problem develop also because of poor flow assurance management in mystery. And that's why we are trying to solve that. In downstream, when we have slug flows that develop as a result of slug that is formed within the storage tanks, we begin to have some problem like the sorter overload, uh, where, the sorter, where we are trying to uh, dilute the salt content of the food produced uh, because you have uh, on uh, irregular uh, components, compositions of your crude oil, you can overload your uh, disorder and which could lead to corrosion or damage of, it, of, uh, of that uh, facilities. Then we have issues like crude oil preheat train uh, fouling, which is caused predominantly by the uh, precipitation of asphaltins on, your, on our crude oil uh, preheat facilities, a pressure buildup in pipe steels and other uh, problems. Like that. So we are trying to look at how do we resolve all these problems that comes from uh, taking what is produced from the reservoir to the end users? How do we resolve this problem that arises at every stage from the half stream, midstream, and to the downstreams? That's where flow assurance come, uh, uh, what flow assurance try to resolve. And flow assurance is defined as thermal hydraulic design and assessment of multi-phase fluid production and transport system. You have a situation whereby uh, before now, we normally produce uh, from the well and separate them immediately and transfer the gas separately and transfer the water separately and transfer the oil separately. Now we have a pipeline, multi-phase pipelines that combine all the fluid that's produced and transport them to the receiving facilities. You want to ensure that the thermal uh, that, um, relationship, the thermal and chemical relationship of the products you are producing, the flow rates, the hydraulic uh, constraints, do not develop into other uh, uh, problems like hybrid formations and all, all the, uh, the things uh, uh, that, that around that. So thermal hydraulic design actually deals with thermodynamics, deals with the uh, food, uh, food dynamics, and it deals with uh, uh, each transfer. Uh, for thermal uh, thermodynamics uh, aspect of uh, Flow assurance, it's these with uh, each transfer in a in an equilibrium system. Why the heat transfer these with the time rate of energy transfer, and all this comes together to play with what we are dealing with in flow assurance. So we want to be able to predict, prevent, and make remediations of flow constraints due to solid depositions. The temperature your uh, product gets to and once begin to appear. The uh, temperature that your if your products traveling through the pipelines or your storage tank get to certain temperature, hydrates to form, which involve the, the inclusions of water and uh, gases and so on and so on. So you want to be able to predict before it happens and stop those kind of development. I have a very short video here that just deals with try to explain some of the constraints we we are facing in flow assurance, like a stock production. I play it.
Yeah, so we want to we want to be able to predict in advance when will this situation uh, happen? When will this situation develop? And be able to uh, provide uh, certain measures to prevent it. So uh, in flow assurance, like for example, when we have challenges with single phase or multiple, when you have a pipeline where you want uh, a single phase to be the only uh, uh, content of that pipeline, you have to play with the pressure of the uh, the pressure of the environment, the pressure that is in the pipeline, uh, rather, and the temperature at, at which you are transporting your fluids. And sometimes if you are transporting your fluids, and uh, a single phase fluid, and there's change in pressure or change in temperature, you begin to have other condensation, you begin to express condensation in your, uh, permit me to use, let me use pointer, you begin to experience condensation in your pipelines, Something that you are, when you have a only liquid, liquid phase before, as temperature increases, there will be inclusion of uh, uh, gases. You have eighty percent liquid there. You have sixty percent liquid there. You have forty percent liquid there. You have twenty percent liquid there. At some point, that's something you only tra you are only transporting gas. So you want to be able to regulate what goes on in your pipeline. That if you are transferring from point A liquid, you want the actual content to get to the end user. As liquid, and some some of the things we do in flow assurance is in uh, thermohydraulic design, like you can operate at pressure above critical temper, which is the pressure that if you are moving a single phase content, condensation will not happen. When it's above this critical point, condensation will not experience any other condensation in your uh, in the pipelines or in your facilities. So these are some of the things: pressure, temperature balance, and all that that we consider together in them. Um, in flow assurance. So some of the things we, the decisions and choices we make include, are we going to produce this reservoir with single or dry water phase line? Are we, is, is it, are we dealing with wet gas or dry gas? The pipe diameter is very, very important. When your pipe diameter is misdesigned, the pressure drop will be significantly affected. That means you can be producing from point A, from a reservoir A, and you will not be able to get the fluid you are producing to the uh, receiving facilities, whether to the top separators or so you want to be very specifically sure of the pipe diameter. If you over design, you waste materials, you pay more to pipe materials, to insulation materials. If you under design, you risk the problem of having, uh, not having your product being delivered at end. So you want to also check pipe wall thickness for each transfer, each conduction and also convection within the pipe. We want to check what kind of insulations, the material selection, the operating pressures, and the maximum and minimum temperatures that it requires, the chemistry that goes on that affects both corrosion, hydrates, and work space. So these are some of the decisions we take. So the, what is supplied to flow assurance engineer uh, by the, uh, the, uh, those, guys, the, those guys who complete the well is that they supply to us the minimum well health pressure, and the flow rates. So once we design the minimum head pressure that is required to get the fluid that's produced from the well to the receiving facilities, these are very, very critical design uh, parameters in flow assurance. So we need to know this, the pipe size, the, the, condition, the boundary conditions given it, so that we could accurately, accurately predict uh, fictional losses in the, along our pipeline systems. The other time we were talking about flow uh, drugs, the video was talking about some uh, issues that happen with slugs in uh, pipe systems. This is basically caused by when you have two phase in your pipeline, like gas and oil. And when sometimes when you have this pass bubble, when you have high uh, uh, velocity gas in, in, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, the crude oil flowing in the same pipe, uh, pipelines, but well, most often, the condition that we have where we are, we want to avoid is when we have intermittent uh, slugging, intermittent flow, pattern of uh, uh, flow. When we have intermittent flow pattern, you risk corrosion. Reason being that your, the gas and the liquid fluid is supplying an anode and cathode ratio in your pipe system, and your pipe system begins to serve as cathode and anode uh, relationship, and it will corrode. And also, it's difficult for us to design exactly what is happening within the pipe, pipe content 
because the cross-sectional area of your of the fluid that is flowing within your pipe are different at, uh, at any particular time. So if you are trying to diagnose this pipe, you have a bubble, an elongated bubble here, and you have a liquid section there. Whatever you are doing as a, to design your pressure or your max flux at this point is different from what is happening at this point. It's different from what is happening at that. So you want to prevent anything that's, that has to do with intermittent flow in your design. So, and so on and so forth about uh, flow assurance production. So I will just, these are some of the models that are available in um, uh, pipe seams and, um, and uh, hogger for us to design uh, pressure, uh, flow rates, and temperatures, and all that in our heat system. One other thing that we do apart from designing for pressure and the pipe size is its uh, thermal management. And we have a section whereby we use with heat transfer, uh, which will be steady when we are producing from our oil. Uh, the temperatures of the liquid that's being produced from the reservoir are uh, escaped, are uh, transferred to the environment. You see absorbed. So when we are producing, we have a condition of a steady uh, temperature gradient. We can predict our temperature, our temperature drop based on distance. But in the case of transient, when we are operating, when we shut down our well or we want to start our well again, that we have a transient temperature provide, we, where temperature varies with time, not with distance. The steady vary with uh, distance, while the transient vary with time. At this point, we want to calculate, not the distance, we want to calculate the time at which the temperature will drop to critical temperature, whereby hydrates begin to appear or wax uh, formation begins to occur in your pipeline. So you need uh, to understand the thermal management of your system to be able to predict the vapor, liquid equilibria, the physical and thermodynamic property estimation, and so on and so forth. For instance, in a steady state uh, temperature profile, if you select a material that has the overall heat transfer coefficient as this high by 10, and sometimes we have our wax appearance temperature at 25 uh, degrees centigrade, we can see with distance at the oil travel from the Wellhead or from the reservoir or from the wellhead uh, through the pipeline, we see that the temperature begins to decline. And when it gets to about 6,000, you're already operating below the point where the wax uh, will appear, will nucleate and form and plug your pipe. And there will, there will cease to be flow or there will be great, uh, highly, a uh, high pressure drop in your system, which will affect the entire operation system. So you want to insulate, add material that reduce the overall heat transfer co coefficient of your pipeline system to the environment, so that maybe you pick two, and your temperature profile will fall above the wax appearance temperature, and so on. So you can protect your pipe, and you can prevent formation of wax within your within your pipeline systems. There are a lot of methods that are deployed for this. You can use passive insulation multilayers. There is a, a method also that they use hot water circulations and indirect pipeline for the flow lines. Uh, in this case, what happened is that there are, as you can see, there are multiple pipelines bundled together within an, an enclosure. This is a pipeline that production pipelines. These are production pipelines, and there are minor pipelines inside that enclosures in that pipe, big that pipe that is meant for hot water transfer. So the water as the water is transferred through those small pipes, they radiate it into the environment and able to keep the, uh, to the, uh, the effluent, the production fluids at the temperature above wax appearance or average formation temperature. But the challenge that we have with this system is that it's the temperature that of the water that is being supplied to the system drops with distance. So when we are dealing with the long tie back uh, 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 production lines, uh, the temperature of the water that is supplied drops uh, significantly, and then hydrate and wax begin to form within our pipeline. So it's not highly recommended. Other method that I use is DH, DH, AH, which is direct electric heated uh, pipeline, where a cable is uh, direct uh, electric uh, heating cable is picking back on the main pipeline. And the pipeline serves as one of the electric uh, uh, circuits. So it's acting also as one of the electric circuits. So 
that the temperature is constantly supplied to this pipeline throughout the production facilities, and they are able to maintain uh, uh, the temperature of the pipeline system above wax appearance temperature and uh, hydrate formation temperatures. Other one that we have is this electrically crazy tech pipe in pipe. This is a very, very uh, standard insulated, insulated uh, pipelines where you have normal piping pipes and you have an insulated material, insulation materials uh, around the main pipes. But also there's a centralizer, a polyamide centralizer there, where, which contains a uh, hose for optic uh, facilities, optic systems to see what is going on in your pipeline. And also a tracing cable that provide heat on this pipeline so that continuously you can provide continuous heating for your pipelines. Uh, especially when you are producing at low flow rate, low, uh, when you are at turn down production, uh, or you want to, when you shut down, or you want to restart, or when you are uh, shutting down your system for a very, very long time. This system helps to provide effective eating to your uh, pipeline system and help to prevent works and uh, address uh, production in your pipe systems. Now, this hydrate for this is an example of hydrate formation. Uh, this is a pipeline that starts from about zero to 10 kilometers. And as the fluid content travel through the pipeline, if you pick uh, uh, overall its transfer coefficient that's so high, at some point you begin to expand. By the time you trans your fluid trans uh, is transported to around 4.5 kilometer, once begin, I mean, I did begin to form and it will eventually plug your facilities completely you will not get any product at the end. So you want to be sure to design your pipeline and insulate it in such a way that the overall heat transfer coefficient is low and the temperature profile fall above uh, hydrate formation temperatures. This, and in dealing with your temperature uh, and pressure as well, you are careful enough to not just increase the uh, pressure and think you will avoid um, hydrate formation. And you are careful enough not to increase your temperature in, uh, to a range whereby you risk hydrate formation. Hydrate is formed at higher pressure and low temperature, most of it. So you want to operate your pipe system in an hydrate-free region where the temp pressure is high and the temperature is high, and you can therefore prevent uh, a hydrate formation. Once hydrate is formed in your pipeline, it's very difficult to remove. It's very, very difficult because it requires high, uh, it has low thermal conductivity and require large heats of dissociation for it to be able to uh, melt off. So, uh, other things that they do, they do to prevent hydrate formation includes uh, uh, methanol, addition of methanol to your production line to, uh, uh, to uh, prevent formation of hydrate formation. This is an example of uh, tough uh, feed production where flow assurance techniques is deployed. This is a, uh, the Lagan and Tomor gas feeds in Shetland. This, uh, this is a, a gas feed that's produced, is, that's deep, is under the seawater at about 600 meter deep. Yeah, it has about eight subsea wells that were tied back to the, uh, the single platform with a lot of pipelines. The pipeline stretching about 143 kilometers. And uh, the sea condition there is about minus one, minus one, the temperature of the sea environment is about minus one. And this is have been successfully designed and currently it's serving the uh, UK uh, energy. Uh, it's successfully being produced every year and they are, they, are, they are getting a lot of gas from it. Now, my research system as I begin to round up, uh, my research work focused uh, basically on hydrodynamic uh, in Kuber story time to prevent sludge deposition. Now, most of these gains that are made in pipelines are reversed back when our products get to the storage facilities, especially in crude oil storage camps. The, when the uh, crude oil are deposited in uh, storage tanks, are dropped in, uh, uh, passed to the storage tanks, they were left there for a while. There are content, long chain paraffinic content of hydrocarbon and asphaltin content we begin to form a particles. We have a, here we have uh, the asphaltin micron. On the surface, we have the protective resin. If this protective resin does not fully cover the surface of the uh, asphaltin micron, 
they begin to attract themselves, they form heavier uh, uh, particles, and they begin to drop to the bottom of the tank. And with time, if they are not dealt with, they kicked up and they reduce the storage capacity of our, of our tanks. And eventually, uh, uh, we will be losing a shortage of uh, costly transfer measurements. There will be a shortage of, of, of capacity, and some of this uh, sludge will be passed across to downstream, causing other operational problems. So what we are trying to do in this case, we are trying to provide a method that is able to uh, uh, prevent storage tank from having this experience. The conventional method that has been used is uh, side entry propellers. And this has been limited because it fails to provide the sufficient uh, uh, kinetic energy that is needed to prevent sludge deposition. It only clears about six to 10 meters of, from the, di the diameter of the impeller. And we have in industry, uh, storage tanks that are about 85 meter, uh, 85 meter in diameters. And also, we, uh, most operators complain of leakages because of the rotating shaft within a bushing. Anytime they are operating in the, the tank content continues to leak to the environment, which we want to solve. Actually, there have been a lot of research through computational fluid dynamics that said jet mixing is the way forward. And it has even been deployed in company, but never, never has it been done to research into uh, jet configurations, the jet characteristics that will help us to prevent this. In our work, we're able to investigate various jet configurations within the crude oil storage tanks that gives minimum, uh, that give minimum storage deposition. Uh, at some point, close to zero slot deposition in our crude oil storage tanks. And we also uh, try to measure the time it takes for us to get uh, uh, to homogeneous, homogeneity content of the crude oil storage tanks uh, by jet sharing of the sludge and eventually mixing of the entire crude oil storage. In normal crude blending, we observe that the power content, the power of the jet that you apply, normally fall in linear approach. But when it comes to sludge problem, you cannot scale up, you cannot uh, deal with it by just increasing the power content of your, of your design. We find an approach uh, to express what goes on with jet properties. Uh, that includes the Reno star, which has to do with the viscosity of the sludge that being formed and the viscosity of the crude oil uh, on its own. Uh, and eventually we try to scale up to industrial tanks using the phenomenon that was observed in laboratory, like um, uh, a jet sharing regime dominates. Uh, we have three regimes within the uh, mixing uh, operation, which includes the jet sharing regime. We have intermediary regime, which combines the radial gradient regime uh, that is demonstrated here, and the jet sharing regime uh, together. And the final point, the dead zone is completely mixed depending on the radial pressure gradient that you are, that you are operating uh, based on your jet characteristics. So we were able to develop a scale of criteria by using the uh, momentum flux of the jets and the discourse uh, force that is offered by the sludge. And we're able to find a very, very, very good uh, correlation profile uh, for any tanks, any tank storage, based on what we observed from our experiments. We also use uh, computational fluid dynamics to solve some media stroke questions to uh, see uh, player-based uh, solutions to see what happens within our tanks based on jet configuration. And we're able to finalize uh, uh, some of the best approach to prevent sludge deposition that's been deployed and observed that this is very, very useful and it can help us to prevent the sludge deposition within the storage tank. So finally, uh, from the research we have done so far, we've been able to uh, ascertain that the objective of flow assurance is not fulfilled until the oil and gas produce are delivered to the end users. So there's need for further flow assurance research efforts in midstream and downstream operations. Instead of limiting our entire um, efforts to what happened in subseas, we also need to look at flow assurance in midstreams and downstreams. And for crude oil storage time, we've been able to establish that jet induced aerodynamics of crude oil storage time can effectively service crude oil storage tanks, providing the critical velocity needed to prevent uh, sludge uh, deposition. Thank you so much. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. 
I will open to questions and comments and uh, observations. Uh, okay, thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Timothy Oduadero. I'll just give a brief recap of um, what you have um, put together and also discussed with us. Um, it's a brilliant academic overview of what transpires in flu assurance. Um, flu assurance is very key, as we all know, a requirement for crew to be able to flow from the reservoir into the well bore through the tubing, uh, from the well head through the flow lines to the um, flow stations, and then of course to um, the terminal where it can be monetized. And um, um, he has talked about uh, several issues that are with respect to this. He has talked about the the balance between pressure and temperature. Uh, while he was talking, I was uh, uh, I was just thinking in my heart and mind that I hope that. Uh, people who stay in cold regions that their bloods will not clot, you know, just like uh, uh, cold and pressure affects how oil and gas flows. So pressure and temperature is very, very key. Um, we also talked about um, the need for proper sizing um, as um, geologists, as engineers, as members of field development planning teams. Um, these uh, considerations are normally uh, required when we're doing our field development plan. So what you do is you plan ahead in anticipation of things that may happen. Uh, for instance, proper pipeline designs he talked about, um, where you must not over design and at the same time you must not under design. So things must be opt optimized. Uh, if you over design, like he said, um, you spend more money that is cost and the economics of the project will be impacted. And then if you under design, there might be inefficiencies and also safety concerns. And I'll give you an example. Um, if you design a pipe flow line and the pressure is the, the um, production along that flow line is much more than it can really contain, then you give room for erosional velocity concerns. Uh, if you have a tubing size, maybe you have a three and a half inch tubing, four and a half inch tubing, uh, or two seven eight. If you, 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 you if you over design, you may spend more money for your tubing size, uh, and then the resultant production may not be uh, enough for you to even um, cater for that additional cost, and also you may have a uh, liquid hold up issues and so on and so forth. So, um, planning. Um, Field development plan is um, really important. He also talked about um, um, pressure uh, losses. And of course, when you're moving from one point to another, pressure is lost. If you're walking your energy from one point to another, your energy, your zest, your zeal, your steam could be, could be lost. So energy is lost and there's drop in pressure as you move from your reservoir to your well bore, up to your facilities, and so on and so forth. Um, he also talked about um, heat losses. So heat is lost to the environment, and that can also affect flow. Uh, he talked about um, wax appearance temperatures. Um, as you know, as you move from one point to another, your, your temperature um, begins to cool at some point in time. And also, even in the well bore, you can also have um, um, wax formations in the Niger Delta, we do have wax forming both inside the well bore and also in the pipeline, just as he had talked about. He also talked about um, thermal management and also hydrodynamics in his discussion, also talked about jet optimization tests. And in conclusion, he talked about the need for more and more studies on flow assurance. Flow assurance should not be underestimated it's something that is real, it's a reality. While uh, some of the issues can be preventive, he also talked about some of them uh, being solution-based when they occur. So in a nutshell, I'll say that um, optimization is key. Um, we're going to be optimizing uh, flow, we're go going to be optimizing our pressure temperatures, and uh, like they say, too much of everything is, is, is bad. 
And, and, and I would like to add here that too little of some things could be bad. And I'll give you a personal example. Um, a certain time I, uh, I reduced my sugar intake and I went for a test. And by the time I went there, the, the doctor said, ah, no, you need, to, you need to take a bottle of Coke right now. Your, your sugar is too low. So when it's too high, they'll say it's too high. When it's too low, they'll say it's too low. And I'll give an, another example in the in, in industry. While gas lift is good, you want to inject gas to improve your vertical lift and get more production. Too much of it could be bad because um, you begin to stifle the flow of your oil. You begin to flow more gas preferential to the oil. So at this point in time, I will, um, I will um, work with um, Mr. Ebenezer as we begin to entertain um, questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Ebenezer. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Angina Poyami. And thanks to Angina Timothy for a well-presented uh, uh, session. Please, if you have a question, you can type your question in the chat box. And uh, if, you, if you don't mind, you can also signify by raise of hand and I'll call your name, then you unmute and speak. Any question right now? And if you want to contribute to this topic, yeah, please go ahead. Some Joe scientists have uh, some knowledge about the uh, flow assurance. Uh, why, if you want to share it, uh, because uh, for me, I don't think it's, it's, it's good for a geoscientist to do classical work. You do your interpretation, then you just hands off. Just like engineer Pierre said, it's not a relay race. You still have to work with the entire team to ensure that your crew get to the point of sale. Then of course, you know that the work you have done was a good one. So uh, please, any question right now, um, please try and um, unmute. Let me check the chat box. Okay, somebody is asking a question, Engineer Timothy. Is it possible to maintain a pressure above bubble point for the wells in the Niger Delta? This from Polako uh, Akonde. Is it possible to maintain a pressure above bubble point for the wells in the Niger Delta. Niger Delta. I would say yes, but as I'm saying that yes, a lot of other factors that are involved with that uh, particular uh, well or case study has to be taken cognizance of. You cannot just, depending on what you are sacrificing for what, if you increase the pressure, what about the other factors? What about the see a condition that involves hydrate formation? Uh, above bubble periods, you don't want the gas to, uh, yes, that means you are operating at the Picodemba. You, you don't want the gas to uh, 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 evaporate or escape from the well, uh, from the oil, saturated oil. Yes, you can do that. But you have to also take, take cognizance of other production, uh, uh, other aspect of production before you decide on one uh, major factor. So yes, depending on your design, depending on the pressures of your well, depending on if your, the pressure of the well is uh, declining, you can do some injections for hands oil recovery. You can do water injection or gas injection or that to increase your pressure above certain things. But uh, you can increase your pressure above bubble points, but you have to consider a lot of other factors before you do that. If we include some technical details. I don't know if, um, that let, let me also just um, let me also add to, to that. Um, so as you begin to uh, produce, your reservoir pressure begins to decline. Um, as also as you begin to produce with time, uh, some gas may come out of solution. Um, sometimes you can produce to some level above your bubble point at some point in time, but over a longer period of time, um, your gas uh, comes out of solution. And that's when you begin to produce um, below your bubble point. So if you have an inflow performance uh, curve, for instance, um, if it is only just your gas, your um, single phase, you have a straight line. Um, after a while, if your gas comes out of solution, if you operate below your bubble point, your inflow performance curve uh, bends. So uh, with proper reservoir management, you can, but with time, uh, the, the 
chances and the possibilities of producing below your bubble point exist. Yeah, thank you. All right. Th thanks so much. Thanks so much. There's another question again from Galba Iliasu. He said, uh, what is the rate of decrease of crude flow with distance? What is the rate of decrease of crude flow with distance? Okay. Uh, it depends again on your facility. It depends on the pipe diameters matters. The pipe diameters of your uh, of your uh, uh, of your flow line, the velocity of the crude you are producing. Is the gas involved? If the gas is in the uh, also in pipeline, there is what is called slip condition between the gas and the liquid. It drags back whether your it is your own flow rate. It will be affected by friction head. It also uh, depends on the distance of the pipes. So these are the things why you uh, flow assurance determined at first, the minimum temperature, the minimum pressure, the minimum velocity, and the wellhead for you to get to the kind of distance you are going to. So you have to fix those things based on the interaction, uh, hydraulic interactions of the product you are producing. So it's not something I can say, this is the rate. It depends on the well that we are producing. And some of these factors, the diameter of your pipe, the velocity of the gas, the volumetric uh, fraction of the gas content, the liquid content, the uh, velocity of the gas content determines uh, that flow rate. And also, this, the video we showed in the, that uh, presentation is was talking about slugging. That is a severe slogging case. There's a terrain slogging and a severe sub, uh, slogging case. Also affects your flow rate. It, if you see the crop uh, production jumps up and come down, jumps up and come down. So there are a lot of factors that, that are involved. And it depends seriously on your pipeline design, on your pressure and temperature designs, on the hydraulic systems of the fluid content within the pipelines. Okay, um, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Timothy. Let me just also... Um, just to corroborate uh, exactly what you were talking about. So uh, there are several factors uh, that are responsible for the rate of decrease of crude flow with distance. Like we mentioned earlier, as you move from your reservoir into your well bore, pressure is lost and there is flow rate that decreases as you are moving from a high pressure to a lower pressure regime. That's number one. Um, actually, all these things can be modeled. Uh, we have so many softwares um, and nodal anal analysis uh, that can model all these things and also um, process engineering softwares that can model all these things. And one other factor that also can determine the rate of the decrease of your crude with distance is the properties of the crude. So if you have a low API crude, uh, maybe like 19, 20, thereabouts in terms of API, and you have a high API crude, maybe 36 and so on API, your heavier crude, which is the one that has a lower API, um, it flows, the, the rate of decrease of flow with distance will change will be different from the rate of decrease of flow um, with respect to the um, lighter crude. Um, one other thing that can also affect um, the <clears throat> decrease of crude flow with distance is your, um, your, your flow lines, your flow line configuration. So, you know, so your flow lines, most of the time, our, our picture of flow lines is that they are a straight line. While that is true in some terrains and in some co configurations, there are sometimes that the flow lines will bend and sometimes they will curve and so on and so forth. So you cannot uh, compare the rate of um, um, decrease in flow line rates for a straight line and then that in a curve. So these things have to, have to be modeled. Then also the content of your, your crude, for instance, sometimes it may have water and also make it um, heavier. So that also will affect. So in essence, these things need to be properly modeled based on the specifics. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Angina Kwame. 
Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Sorry, Dr. Dr. Sorry, Dr. Iman. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, and one of the models you can, yeah, I mean, one of the software that helps with this are done by ScrumBG. And hopefully, PTI will soon partner with them and get some access to some of these things too. And I think it's been this new company. It's um, a pipe seams and auger that help us to model these uh, flow behaviors and we can predict any of those things ahead of time. Uh, the uh, pressure decline, the flow rate decline and all those things that help us to uh, identify what to do for each particular case as uh, Mr. Engineer. Yeah, you are, you are, you are muted. Are you, are you, okay, you have completed your thought, okay. Uh, Halliburton also has a uh, Nexus uh, that uses uh, that used to do simulation uh, from the reservoir even to the well bore and even uh, for surface production modeling. So it will yeah. it, it, be nice. Uh, uh, PTI also uh, collaborates so that we can we can see how uh, to yeah, manage think, uh, the Just just like we are talking about an integrated approach. Uh, uh, you can also you can you can model it um, you can model it from the reservoir even to the well and even to the surface and just like you're all talking and it, that is the integrated approach. So you have your reservoir. Um, there, there's also um, um, some software they, which is an IPM suit, uh, Petex. Oh, Petex. Uh, yeah. yeah, where you have your gap, your general um, allocation package. You have your Prosper, your production system performance tool, and you also have your Ember. So when you connect these uh, together, you can have the integrated uh, modeling approach, um, yeah. like like um, Mr. Ebenezer and uh, Engineer Timothy have mentioned. Yeah, thank you. Th thanks so much, uh, Doctor Emmanuel Madwawe. Uh, sorry for keeping you uh, so long. Can you? Uh, okay, thanks so much. You can ask your question or your contribution, sir. All right, thank you very much, uh, team, Tim Oluwadere. Thank you very much for an interesting and uh, very exposing academic uh, presentation. Um, I want to thank our president quiz here, Dr. James Sedet and the president-elect and the every other ESCO members here. Uh, mine is a contribution and is also a challenge because I've gone through the attendees, the participants, and I see a lot of uh, people in the academia and the uh, students as well. So the contribution I'm putting here is that what I got from what the uh, team has been telling us is this relationship between pressure, volume, temperature versus time. So I will encourage my fellow students and the lecturers here present that they may want to go back and look or research more on boys and Charles theory on all those pressure, whether it's directly proportional or inversely proportional or antagonistically proportional to each other. I think that basic elementary uh, principles will also help us to digest what a uh, team have really elaborated for us here. So that's just the contribution I want to make. We can go back to those uh, primary theory and then start from there and also grow with what team have presented to us. Thank you very much for your time, I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Dr. Madwawi. All right, we have another question uh, in the chat box. So what is the most effective thermal management method? What is the most effective thermal management method? I, I, will, I will say, uh, apart from the hot water circulation, I will say uh, the combined approach of pipe in pipe, like pipe in pipe that we have here, or the direct electric heating systems uh, with insulations uh, behind the pipe as well. The pipe in, light, pipe in pipe is a standard insulation method that already protects a uh, lot of heat, I mean, protects uh, the pipeline from losing its heat to the environment so due to convection of the sea platform and sea beds and all those things. But also, there are also other things that are had a backfilling of pipes with sand or granite based on what you, they, they, when they are digging the trench within the sea floor. The, the kind of sign, sound that is used to backfill the pipe also is important. It's helped to protect from corrosion and it also serves as 
further installations. So when you combine all these, uh, I didn't talk about that, uh, but when you combine all these uh, thermal management method, uh, is very, very effective. Hot water circulation is also effective for short tie back, short distance tie back. They are not too far. The hot water will still retain its heat uh, to some distance. But when we are dealing with a very, very long distance tie back, like the one, the case study, the case study we are measuring about 143 kilometers, this uh, then the effectiveness of hot water circulation begins to break down. Also, if you can combine the electric heating systems, you can combine the, uh, the back fillings of your pipelines with uh, insulations and all that. The insulations are made from polymers or it could be synthetic and all that. And uh, the cost differs. Uh, so you can be able to effectively, uh, effectively protect your pipeline and from uh, it loss. And it's, so it is also case dependent. Depends on what you are dealing with. What, what's the sea temperature you are dealing with? What is the depth of the sea? What is the distance from the, the distance of the tie back from the well to the platform and so on and so forth. So it depends on what you are dealing with to be able to pick uh, the best method that optimize uh, uh, prevention of heat loss. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, why, why are you talking about uh, hydrate formation and, and a deep sea uh, scenarios? We know that most of the IOCs are more or less going into the deep sea and even, even uh, ultra deep sea. Uh, my question is for the marginal um, field operators, which are NOCs, you know. Um, you know, most of their fields are in shallow offshore, swamp, or land. So we need to sensitize the stakeholders on the need, you know, to optimize uh, their pipelines or maybe their uh, FSO so that we don't have uh, a flow assurance issue. And I think PTR as a body will be handing in that uh, regard because we have a kind of synergy between the industry the government academic. So you can always champion that cause because you know the, the marginal field operators are Nigeria that own this oil field. So we don't want a situation where somebody will spend so much money and invest and at the end of the day you discover that your crew is not able to get to your terminal. So uh, my suggestion is that uh, PTI should champion this cause and it will go a long way to make uh, the marginal field operators uh, you know, get a returns on investment. So, uh, do we have any other question? Please, if you have questions, just signify by raise of hand. I can't see any question in the chat box again. Okay. Um, Engineer, can you me any final thoughts so that we go to the next? Uh, well, I just again. want to say thank you very much for for the um, presentation um, and also collaboration. Um, that word collaboration is, is very, very key. Um, to be an effective manager, you, you can't just be a reservoir engineer and a reservoir engineer alone. To be an effective manager, you must be able to understand what happens from your reservoir or to be an effective manager, you can't just be a geologist alone or just understand the seismic or just understand your maps, your, um, your static modeling, and, and, and that's all. You also need to be vast and have an understanding of what other team members um, do. Um, and especially in this area of flow assurance, load and analysis, and also production optimization which a lot of um, g and g personnel already have because of their multidisciplinary approach so this should continue to be encouraged and that is one of the things i see in nape's wisdom have brought this topic so that um, there is an integration and there's also a multidisciplinary approach in this flow assurance uh, requirements um, uh, I don't have any other thing to say, but I just want to say thank you to all the contributors and to all the quest questions that have been asked. Yeah, thank you.
Many, many thanks, uh, Engineer Okoyomi. Uh, out of your busy schedule, uh, you were able to find time to, to join us in this uh, technical session. We appreciate it. And also, Dr. Timothy, uh, we appreciate you so much. Um, so the next item is uh, presentation of flag, and uh, we have our amiable and visionary national president of NAPE, Dr. James Edet F. NAPE on the call. So he will be doing the presentation of this flag to engineer Timothy. Dr. James, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ebenezer. Uh, it's nice to um, see you again. Yeah, good to see you, and, sir. Uh, to be with uh, the worry chapter again. Uh, so on behalf of the um, executive committee of NAPE and also the um, advisory council, as well as the board of trustees, uh, the fellows and emeritus members uh, of NAPE, in fact, the general membership of NAPE. Let me thank the Wari chapter uh, for being so um, outlooking and uh, forward looking uh, in bringing this topic uh, to the fore. Uh, I think that the issue of flow assurance cannot be overemphasized or uh, overstressed. It's important. I have been working on flow assurance issues um, for many years for Total, especially in terms of research and development, uh, gas hydrates formation and so on and so forth. So it is a very key uh, presentation. And I must say that the uh, presenter, Timothy um, Oluwadero, uh, thank you very much for a very brilliant, brilliant presentation. Uh, and of course, uh, supported by the chairperson of, of this um, session of Bayami, Alu um, I think, uh, let me also thank the uh, Wari chapter coordinator, um, Wilson Osung for uh, being so uh, forward looking, uh, I'm sure, and his team and his team have done very well. Um, and of course, supported by Beniza, by Boye, uh, who I would say is an able facilitator, um, uh, the chief MC of the occasion. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I can see um, KK Kanu is on the call. Thank you for being here. Uh, the uh, president elect is also on the call, Elliot Ibie. And uh, I haven't seen other people. Uh, I don't know if the VP is on the call, but um, nevertheless, I think we have quite a number of us. Chris Jackson, it's good to see you. Um, thank you very much, Worry Chapter, uh, for this brilliant presentation. And to um, crown it all, let me make this uh, flag presentation on behalf of NAPI to the uh, guest speaker, uh, Ms. Engineer. Timothy Oluadero, and uh, how do you want to do this? You want to shake hands? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> That's good. Tim, all yeah. right. There's my hand. There's yeah, the right. flag. And <laughs> thank you very thank much. You, <laughs> Excellent. Very nice. Thanks so much, sir. Uh, yeah. I, I guess you've covered some of the goodwill I think, messages. I think I've covered the goodwill message because uh, that had to be done first and yes. then I make the presentation. So uh, thank you very much once again to everybody. And I look forward to another interesting presentation, another interesting topic from the worry chapter. I'll try and make it all the time. 
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate your presence as usual. Um, definitely next month, we'll still make out time to do the same. And we hope you'll be on the call also. Thank yeah. you so much. Absolutely. So, I so at this junction, we want to go back to uh, the sponsor's uh, message and uh, the person that will be representing the, the principal uh, of PTI is uh, Mr. Aliyu Odamo. He's uh, the HOD for PG department in the PTI. That's Petroleum Engineering and Geoscience Department in PTI. He's also a member of the Advisory Council for NAPE. So I want to call on Mr. Adamu Aliyu to give the sponsor's message. Mr. Aliyu, sir. I hope he's still on the call. Okay, I can't see him on the call again. He was there a while ago. Well, I can't see him. Uh, Mr. Osong. Yeah, I, I cannot see Mr. Ali on the call again. No, well, just go to this. I, I can't take it. Uh, he was oh. on the call. Maybe I'm sure something came up. Okay, sir. Go he ahead, tried, sir. He tried to reach me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Go to the next slide. Okay. On behalf of the principal chief executive of the Chilam Training Institute, Nigeria's foremost institution, of in the petroleum and uh, in the petroleum industry, uh, Dr. Henry Adibula. Uh, it's my singular honor and privilege to actually be speaking on his behalf. Uh, without much ado, I just want to uh, inform our audience that PTI and NAPE, we have come a long way. This partnership has been on for quite a while as far back as uh, 2018, uh, NAPE actually uh, gave the opportunity of co-hosting the mini conference alongside with FUPRI, and PTI played a very prominent role. And uh, ever since then, we've been having uh, consistently, we've been doing the well site uh, geology training in our demonstration week. We've also been having our student presence in the, in the NAPE conference. Uh, the student chapter have been very, very active. Uh, for PTI, we are actually, uh, we have a vision clearly stated there to become the leading oil and gas technological institute in Africa with a mission to provide competent technological manpower through quality training, research and consultancy for the petroleum and allied industry. We run several specialized training and certification courses you know, that cut across the industry. Uh, we have uh, 14 existing research uh, clusters around several collaborations with the oil and gas industry and the allied industry. Uh, we actually do regular courses in the middle level manpower development and technological courses. We, we have a drilling mod school. And we have a PTI CBT, the PTI Center for Competent Based Training. We have a fire academy. We also have a corrosion center and the energy policy and management courses that cuts across. We have an effective consultancy services that interface between the industry, the government, and uh, the institute. And uh, to a large extent, we have been running courses and training, you know, uh, personnel within the industry, you know, at different categories. So PTI is actually a one-stop center where you can have most of these things met. Uh, we, we do these things and uh, we, we put the industry, particularly Nigeria, running the Nigerian transition policy, the local content policy, and ensuring that we train competent personnel to man the various sectors in the industry. 
you know, once again, it's a singular honor, even as we look forward to uh, taking the advantage of the complimentary boots that uh, NAPE always offer to TTI, you know, to exhibit at the uh, forthcoming international conference and exhibition planned for, for November. So we hope to be there and we hope to actually represent uh, the institution properly. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and uh, ESCO members, particularly the World Chapter, for giving all this opportunity to actually partner with NAPE from this local chapter, better partnership. Thank you and God bless. Over to you, Benizo. Thank you so much. Mr. Usong, thank you, PTI, for sponsoring this session. We appreciate so much. So I will take the announcements and uh, proceed with the technical session. So uh, the first thing on the agenda is uh, a reminder for members to pay their dues. That is very important. Uh, with the dues, you'll be able to serve uh, you better. So please try as much as possible uh, as you've done in the past to pay your dues. The student membership due is 3,000, active members 12,000, associate members 12,000, and corporate members 50,000. And this, this process is just at a click. It's not difficult any longer. With your mobile phone, with your laptop, you can just effect the transaction and you have a payment receipt sent to you instantly then of course, voila, we're there. Then uh, since we know that education um, uh, does not have an end, we need to keep learning. So NAPI is uh, bringing up a short course on essential of oil field geomechanics. A lot of people are, are new to this. Some people are familiar with what it's all about. Uh, why some people uh, don't know that pore pressure fracture grid analysis is part of geomechanics. So this will give us an opportunity to know uh, about geomechanics and uh, where it falls in the hydrocarbon life cycle of any asset. And it's coming up on the 3rd, 2nd to 3rd of June, 2022, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3, 3 p.m. It's going to be a virtual session via Zoom. And of course, there have been a lot of discounts on this. So for membership, you pay 20,000 instead of the initial 80,000. For non-members, you pay 80,000. And then for students, it's almost free for students, 5,000. Then for student non-members, you pay 20,000. Um, the course instructor uh, is, is, uh, is a veteran in, in geomechanics, Dr. Jerome, I said the big guy. He's a director for and uh, chief technical officer for GQ. Um, I promise you, uh, if you're in this session, I, you you will enjoy yourself. So for for inquiries, please contact Lawrence Uswagu. Uh, this is email address and this is number on the screen. And uh, you can register online and pay uh, make payments at payment.napi.org.ng uh, slash short courses. All right, uh, there is uh, a uh, geoscience book donation drive for university powered by women in geoscience and engineering and NAPE UAP. Uh, it started in, uh, in April on the 15th and uh, it will end by 31st of May, 2022. Please uh, get your books that, uh, you, maybe some books that you think are, are quite elementary, uh, you know, will be useful for a university student. Please you can get them uh, and drop them off at the NAPE Secretariat, 47A. Femi Okuno Housing Estate in Lekki, Lagos. And of course, you can contact Jumoke Akinpelu and Abeyowa Obebo um, in case you want to drop it off for them. Thank you so much. Then we'll have a uh, NAPI Award 2022. Uh, nomination will close by June 30th, 2022. And these awards include Adam Awards, uh, Ben Osuna Award, NAPI Fellowship Award, NAPI Honorary Membership Award, NAPI YP Award and the Duella Award. Uh, for inquiry, you can um, get in touch with the NAPI Vice President, uh, Dr. Antonio Foma F. NAPI. 
for more inquiry. Wow. So announcing the 40th annual international conference and exhibition of NAPE for the year 2022. Uh, it's always an interesting time to gather uh, geoscientists, engineers, uh, you know, to deliberate on so many issues uh, with respect to the oil and gas industry. Uh, the, the theme this year will be global energy transition and the future of oil and gas industry, evolving regulations, emerging concepts and opportunity. The date is 13th to 17th November 2022. And the venue is a cool hotel and suit Victoria Line Lagos. Uh, please, for more inquiries, you can also contact Lawrence Oswago on this telephone number. So uh, in line with having an eventful 48th annual international conference and exhibition, uh, there is need for us to submit our abstracts. So this is a call for abstracts. And the, the sub themes, uh, energy transition and evolving regulatory framework, gas development, commercialization and monetization, the energy transition era, geo environmental strategies in the energy transition era, new concepts and approaches in geophysics, petroleum system studies and integrated reservoir modeling, new technology application, exploration and production, and geosciences training in the new energy and mix ad adapting in a changing world. So very important as much as you can, please let's try and uh, drop our abstract as, as early as you can. Uh, the, please note these times. Uh, abstract Abstract submission deadline. June 30th is the abstract submission. Now, July 31st is acceptance letter issuance. The August 31st is full paper submission. Please, if you're interested in um, make a presentation in the, the 40th awesome. uh, na annual uh, NAPI conference, please note this time. So we, we have uh, advertisement. Um, opportunity for companies, for individuals that want to advertise a full page, half page, back cover, back uh, front cover. You now the information can also be gotten from uh, the website. For more inquiries, please meet uh, our editor-in-chief, Dr. Christopher Jackson, uh, on this uh, issue. So uh, also NAPE is active on the social media. Please try and follow NAPE, like whatever you have read, interact, become a member of our community on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. You can always keep in touch and follow NAPE. So uh, uh, very important. And um, this uh, the NAPE Worry Chapter Executive. If you have any question, uh, inquiry, anything you want to know about uh, Napi Wari, or you live around uh, Wari or Delta State, and uh, you want to make some inquiry, please you can reach out to any of these persons uh, you are seeing. Uh, Mr. Usong is the chapter coordinator. You heard him bo his voice earlier on. Uh, Mrs. Temitoku, uh, Temitayo uh, Ologu is the deputy coordinator. Uh, our publicity secretary is Mr. Loki Iwu. Iwu. Uh, the S official two is uh, Mrs. Kemi Taiwo. Dr. Juliet is the S official one. And uh, okay, uh, Dr. Edet, you I want to say something, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Ebenezer. Just before uh, we round up, um, yes. so uh, people don't uh, run off. Um, prematurely, yes, I just want to uh, put it out here that um, it's also time for our elections. And um, we want to see a lot of people uh, come up and, you know, bring up their interest to, to, to serve the association. Uh, this is very important. And the chapter needs to drum this and put this out there uh, so that, um, we can have people come in and serve the association at the national level as well. Uh, I understand the um, time has just been, uh, the, the period for nominations have just been increased uh, by two weeks. 
um, I've just approved that. So there's still ample time to um, find people to contest for the different positions that are put out there. So please, um, the chapter should help to drum this uh, and make sure this is followed up. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, very timely. Thank you so much. So um, these are the executive, and of course, you can also uh, contact them based on what uh, Anapi National President just mentioned. You can meet any of us to ask about the election or anything pertaining to Anapi. So on this note, I would like to call on uh, pres President-elect, our PE, our uh, amiable Mr. Elliot Ibe F. Nape, to give the vote of thanks as we try to call it a day. Mr. Elliot, sir. Yeah, thanks, Abeze. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Good afternoon. So um, on behalf of um, NAPI, I mean, we've had a last um, almost two hours um, exciting times with the Worry chapter again this month. And I just want to thank the Worry chapter for putting this together. And as the president so articulately put it a few minutes ago, a lot of people have come together to uh, make this uh, event today happen, this session. Uh, I just want to thank the members of the advisory council who are here present the fellows also, as well as uh, the members of the executive committee who are also present here. Uh, the Warri Chapter Executive Committee led by um, Wilson Osun, as well, um, and also want to thank uh, Wilson for um, stepping in to present the um, safety presentation on the sleep trips and falls. Uh, for the sponsor PTI, I just want to thank them for, for, for helping to put this together ensuring that uh, we we gave from this very topical uh, issue. I think the president mentioned that um, uh, flu assurance is, uh, has been topical for when he was, when he just came into the industry and up, up till now. So it's something that we still need need uh, more more eyes on. And I'm happy that uh, PTI came to, um, to, to, to give a good presentation, which was led by um, engineer Timothy Oluwadero. Uh, also, thank the chairperson, engineer Payemi Oluwalade, for for helping to uh, steer the affairs of these um, of these um, event today, as well as um, uh, Dr. Harry Adimola, even though he wasn't present. I uh, just want to thank him for for helping to um, uh, help uh, uh, guide the PTI to sponsor today's um, event. Um, for all those who attended, you um, can see. Uh, quite a number of people on online who still stayed to the end. We should thank all our members and um, friends of NAPE who have joined in to listen to this rather uh, topical um, uh, presentation today. We should say thank you, stay safe, and uh, do have a great uh, rest of the week. All the very best. And thanks, Abeza. Thanks so much for sharing this today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, where we can go far on the NAPE Worry Chapter May Technical and Business Meeting. I'm sure you enjoyed yourself. So uh, keep it a date with us uh, for next month again. We'll soon start sending uh, the adverts out and uh, we know we'll have a brilliant and excellent session for, for next month. Thank you very much and uh, keep safe and have a lovely day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, my president and uh, my PE. I greet you. Yeah, thank you thank very you much. Sir. Thank you, Napi Worry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, Worry Chapter. Yes. Thank you very much, Worry Chapter. Dr. Chris, I see you. Thank you very much for coming around. Yeah, thank you. You're most welcome. That was very wonderful. Thank you. Now we saw. Thank Dr. you. Mad, Dr. Madwa, I saw you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you Thank very you, much. Wilson, how, are how are you wishing? Ah, UK, ah, Europe. UK worldwide. <laughs> he's, not, he's, he's not UK Europe, he's worldwide. He's worldwide. worldwide. <laughs> Thank you very much. Worldwide. <laughs> worldwide. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Good to see you well, Dr. worldwide. <laughs> Dr. Derek Odondiri, I cite you. Thank oh, you, yeah. sir.
Derek, yeah, Derek is there. As, yeah. is Derek. Uh, well as, as, as usual. My <laughs> guy, business, I greet you. I also well I greet you. Yes. Thank you very <laughs> much. I greet you, my brother. <laughs> it's good. Dr. Harry, I saw you. I think you are still there. There's Sake. Sake was there with us. Is he still online? Yeah, very good presentation. Yeah. Thank you. My, co my coordinator, I agree. Oh, Sa Sake, I see you. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. That's a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We keep doing our best to get better. Yes, yeah, so. Well, the we'll yeah. see for putting this together. Good work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Dr. Derek, thank you very much. <laughs> With this hype now, we can't wait for what is coming next month. So pressure on you. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> God, God will help us. <laughs> You've raised the bar, so that's we'll more. Keep, we'll keep getting that's, better. Yes, yes. It's good. It's good. We'll keep getting better. we we'll work around it and see how we can deliver something good. We see, I was not invited, though. He didn't invite me. Ah, UK, UK worldwide. Please, we are, we, are, we are very sorry. We are very sorry. He didn't invite no, me? Uh, no, no. no. Ne ne next time, we'll, we'll give you a route to play. <laughs> next, <laughs> that's good. next time, we'll give you a route to play. UK worldwide. Anywhere you are in the world, I know you must join us. Anywhere. Yes, I trust you on that. Yeah. I trust you on that, that you must join us anywhere you are. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well done, sir. We had uh, 39 persons. 